Hey, what's up, guys? Before we start, I want to give a quick introduction to our community chart specialist, Zach. He will give you weekly classes about charts and just crypto in general. Share some really good news. I would highly suggest you check this entire episode out because you'll certainly learn something from it. He will introduce himself shortly. And this is Zach, guys. You can talk to him here in the community charts channel. If you want to find him or any of the stuff he does, it's in the trading channels, mostly the community charts channel. Here, look, he did a um, chart on hack. He's doing charts on strong. You can just suggest charts to him and he will take a look at it. All right, guys, enjoy this episode and I'll see you next week. This might be the only episode that will be available on YouTube publicly. The rest will be privately. But yeah, there is plenty more to come. Enjoy. Well, great to have everyone in here. Um... I think we'll slowly get started here. Uh, thanks that everyone has their microphone muted. Um, that's great because we don't want any background noise. Um, so I do have to add, uh, if you have your microphone uh, on unmute, please mute your microphone unless you have a question to ask. Um, so you guys are free to ask questions. If I'm going too fast through this um, explaining, uh, please let me know. Um, I must start with I'm, uh, I'm Dutch, so if there is any English that's not perfect, excuse me for that. If anything is not clear or incorrect, please let me know. Um, it will be interactive, so you guys will be able to ask questions or uh, ask for clarification on certain uh, parts. Um, this will be mainly focused, be focused on my experience in the crypto market. I've been around for many, many years in the crypto market, basically since the, since the early days. And I would like to share some of my um, yeah, experience with you guys. So none of this is um, financial advice, investment advice. Um, Brandor, uh, could you mute your microphone, please? Otherwise, I'll have to time you out. <clears throat> and Cass, uh, same for you. So Brandor and Cass, could you guys mute your microphones? Right, thank you. Perfect. So, um, uh, so yeah, I've been around in the crypto market, and I will explain to you guys how I started in crypto. Before we start getting into technical analysis, I do think it's important when you start trading a certain asset that you know who are the other holders, who are who uh, holders. Sorry, who are the other uh, shareholders? Basically, if you're investing in a company, you would like to know the other shareholders. I don't think it's any different for cryptocurrency. If you're investing in a project, you want to know who the bi biggest. Um, um, yeah, shareholders are who have a certain interest in the company, uh, in, in the company's growth. Uh, I don't see the channel. One second, guys. Um, let me forward a screenshot to a person that's a little bit lost in all the channels. Um, do, 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 do. Copy, paste. You just tell them we're in the education center. Yeah, I, I have a if little they find, if, they, if they can't find it, then they probably have it minimized or they don't have the rules. Yeah, so instead of interrupting you, that way they should probably reach out to me or somebody else so you can continue teaching, please. Yeah, I got you. I, I do see a yellow name, so he must have the right role for it. So I it's 9, uh, nine currently. So I, I think it's uh, it's okay that we start right now. Currently, I um, like you said, I won't take any interruptions because it does uh, kind of... Uh, extend the whole process no, right because sorry if you join the channel please meet your mic or i will serve and meet you it's simple as that okay he's all, right. Go ahead. all right perfect all right um uh so yeah so what got me interested in crypto personally, that's where we will start. Then we'll go through a little bit of the journey that I made in crypto, the lessons that I've learned and the lessons that I want to give you guys. Um, so you don't have to make the same mistakes that I did. Um, and uh, from there, we'll go into like uh, trading, what makes crypto trading so much different from uh, trading um, on the normal stock exchange and trading normal stocks or, or, or whatnot, right? Normal assets. So, um, 
what got me into crypto? So around 2014, I had a classmate who was a moderator on uh, all types of forums and he heard about this cryptocurrency thing. Uh, back then, this was like a very nerdy thing, I, I must admit. Like it wasn't that it was like um, a cool thing to, to do cryptocurrencies. Like the value wasn't that high uh, at that point. And so people weren't that interested. Uh, the people that you found in cryptocurrency were mostly geeks and uh, people that were like opposers of the financial systems. Like they didn't like the financial system as it was and and like to my understanding currently like there is a valid point to make because there is no fiat currency uh, that has not gone to zero over time right just imagine any currency that we've seen in the past it's it's always gone to zero over time so there is a certain point to make like to, to say that okay i don't really like <laughs> uh, putting my money or saving my money in, in a fiat currency so i'm uh, going to search for something else that keeps its value better than a, a, a political fiat currency so I, it sounded interesting to me and I, it took a little bit of time, like I dove into the rabbit hole, something that uh, most of you might have um, just started the, the whole process of like understanding what this could could um, could become uh, in, in a couple of years and um, uh, down the road what we can do with this technology, because that's the, that's the most important thing. Um, the technology of decentralization. Sorry, I <clears throat> Guys, uh, please mute your mic if you join the channel. Yep. I'm sorry, you can ask Daddy too. He's in the bathroom and mommy. All right. Go ahead. I serve it. I serve it. Yeah, mute, yeah, mute for them, please. If anyone comes in that's not muted, just mute them for yourself. Perfect. Yep. Thank you. Um, so uh, yeah, that, that got me into crypto. So uh, the the the, um, the first years basically was me going into like a, a a crypto meetup in Amsterdam, finding like-minded people that had the same idea. And I always was fascinated how clever uh, these people were. They were like really bright guys. Most of them developers uh, that had a very good understanding of code. Uh, and I did not have that understanding. So for me, it was like, hey, this sounds really cool, but how can I prove that this piece of code is safe? And how, like the test of time had, had not been, had not taken place yet, right? So for me, it was just listening to them and what they had to say, and I'm trying to understand what this could become. And at that point, I started getting fascinated in becoming a miner because I was started studying towards becoming an accountant which was basically, um, yeah, do, doing the calculations for a company um, and their balance, keeping track of their balance sheet and stuff like that. And I thought, hey, but if, if a computer can uh, keep track of balance sheets in a decentralized manner, uh, why should I be studying this? Why shouldn't I put more time in finding out what this technology is going to become? So that's where it all started uh, of me thinking like, OK, I, I have a smarter way to, to skip my education. And uh, yeah, I have some articles that I can share from around that time, but I'm a bit ashamed uh, because it didn't end up exactly how I, how I uh, expected it to be. Uh, but at some point, yes, I, I started very early with mining. So Ethereum was one dollar when we started mining Ethereum. Bitcoin was around two hundred dollars back then when we started mining uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum. So, um, uh, yeah, there are a couple of things uh, in the in th this is uh, this is the chart from 2011. Uh, so basically 2000, uh, late 2010 uh, till 2020. So till today, basically, and you guys can see that there is always waves in the chart it's not like a straight line up or a straight right line down never it's like it's like a wave structure right and it's a log logarithmic chart which makes things very clear because you can see that around 2010 we were trading at six cents right this is i think the power of bitcoin guys this is why uh individ individuals are hedging themselves in Bitcoin and not in some, uh, not many of them are not um, yet getting into altcoins because first of all, the test of time. Second of all, this was an open source project. Everyone had the chance to buy it at six cents if this is what they believed in, right? So everyone had the fair chance to invest in this in this project and 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 a long time frame to do to do so because yeah well, we went from six cents to currently trading at a thirty six thousand dollars and many of us uh, that are new to crypto are even shocked that it's at thirty six thousand because we're expecting it to be hundred thousand and of course this is programmed it will happen definitely i'm very very certain of that just like i was certain that it did that that this that this uh, uh, all would happen back when we were trading like at at, at uh, uh, two hundred dollars but it just takes time 
right? You can see that the up movements take very little time. So the up, uh, the movements up happen very rapidly, and then we just grind down for years. All right, and I will explain you guys the process and what happens in these um, accumulation phases and in these bear market. Like, why do we need bear markets, right? And I've experienced experienced this firsthand so i think i have a very good understanding on what is happening at that point all right and uh, i saw an interview uh, with michael saylor today and he confirmed a lot of the things that i have experienced firsthand which makes me more confident on sharing it with you guys all right so um we had this bear market here <clears throat> Let's start with the bull market. So this is when I started uh, uh, putting all my uh, eggs in one, in one basket and putting everything I had into mining cryptocurrency. I opened a mining facility in the Netherlands, had a lot of overhead, and uh, we saw the price. Uh, oh, am I correct? Yeah. So uh, we saw the uh, price skyrocket, and around here, uh, around um, uh, late um, um, 2017, I, uh, I had my farm up and running. And, no, that's incorrect, by the way. Uh, it was uh, early 2017. I had it up and running early 2017, uh, right after we hit 1K and had a dump, so it would be somewhere around here. Um, when we started mining, we had a lot of downtime. So it was a new facility. We missed a lot of uh, uptime. So we missed a lot of mining back when the prices were low. And then we had the whole bull market. And uh, yeah, this is when, when things went uh, went sour, uh, south for me personally, because we had this this downtrend and, and I could handle this. But when we dropped here, this is where only American and Chinese mining facilities like bigger operations were profitable. But small operations like mine, we weren't that small, but it was small compared to what they were doing. They were getting unprofitable, right? So then at that point you need like to get out loans or whatever, uh, way you can finance your operation but that was not my plan i didn't want to go corporate i didn't want to sell out and I, it was just a, a hobby for me still right so i decided to sell uh all my miners had a, a ethereum price of 70 dollars so i was mining ethereum for 90 percent. so that was that was that was harsh that was harsh at the same time i was talking to a lot of big miners that I know and some of them are now stock listed uh, uh, companies and they were telling me that Bitmain the producer of the big of most of the miners was buying their own miners back from the second hand market during this bear market right so you have basically uh, hardware and power shifting from the individuals the small time miners and the the house miners as I like to call them uh, towards corporate guys who are investing against like a losing business model for for years just to get shares in this market uh, to get market share right so that's when things for me changed into like a more professional uh, uh, playing field and that was not something I was interested in for the mining part uh, because you had to really get very very uh, cheap deals and stuff Right, so uh, I, I, I quit mining uh, at, the, at the wrong time, definitely. I made a big loss on that. And um, from there, I focused uh, my time fully on trading cryptocurrency. Uh, why did I make that choice? Well, first of all, when I was mining with so much computing power, I really had um, uh, the ability to get the inflation of these new uh, uh, cryptocurrency projects. And back then, we didn't have so many uh, proof of stake uh, projects, right? Uh, most of them were proof of work and you, you could mine them with your GPU most of the times. So um, we we kind of started finding these, uh, these coins that were in accumulation. We started mining them. And then on the pump, we started selling our, our, uh, our inventory. Are, are you in? Sorry? Oh, that was not for me. All right. Um, so yeah, I hope you guys are still following along, and it's it's not getting a boring story. But that's uh, that's my background. I've been in crypto for a while. I've uh, I've uh, I've done a lot of mining, and I've um, looked into a lot of the eco um, like the, and the, um, the economics or, or the inflations of uh, crypto projects, like uh, uh, like Bitcoin, like how many coins uh, are being distributed, and when 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 will this end? So uh, when 
one of the Discord members asked like, when will the next bull market happen? Well, for me, it's very clear. Every time before the next halvening of Bitcoin, which will be in 2024, um, we have a, 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 a bull market basically, because people will be very, very aware that uh, uh, the, the, the coming years, every 10 minutes, it will not be 6.25 Bitcoins that are distributed, but only 3. Point whatever, whatever, right? So, um, um, every time uh, this happens, we've seen a bull market and sometimes one year after and sometimes uh, a couple months before this happening, uh, but it's like a programmed uh, 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 price increase date. All right. So if you just keep track on when the next halvening is, I think you have a very, very good chance of, uh, uh, of timing the bull market somewhat correct. And um, um, this time when we have the next uh, halvening, 93.5% of all the Bitcoins will have been distributed. That means that there is only 7% left to be minted. The rest is already distributed. All right. So it, there is, we're really getting to the end of, of the inflation of Bitcoin. And like I um, heard from Michael Saylor in one of uh, his um, 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 uh, interviews is that uh, uh, all the miners are becoming net buyers. And that makes a lot of sense with the story that I just told you guys that the people that are mining Bitcoin first were household miners and they sold whatever they minted in order to pay for their electricity and their overheads. Currently, we're seeing that shift toward corporate guys that are getting huge investments and investment after investment. So they don't really have to spend anything on electricity besides their fiat currency. So they don't have to spend all any of the coins that are mining that they are mining. Instead, they are buying more. So they are net buyers. <laughs> Uh, besides that, they are also getting a big portion of this inflation rate uh, that uh, Bitcoin has. All right. So, uh, yeah, those are some, some things that I think uh, are very interesting in Bitcoin to, know, to be aware of and um, uh, that also make Bit Bitcoin so interesting to me uh, as a trader. And I, I, I must admit, I'm, I focus most of my time trading Bitcoin. Right. So I, I, I do trade Ethereum and I do trade trade altcoins, but um, my main focus is on trading Bitcoin because I, to, I do think that Bitcoin offers enough opportunity on its own uh, to be uh, sufficient for a trader to profit from or, uh, whether you're a day trader, intraday trader or uh, scalp or whatever you do. Right. Um, so any questions uh, so far, guys? I have a question. <clears throat> Go for it. Or do you? <laughs> I mean, it just seems like you had you know a lot of experience in the early days. So I guess, what has been the biggest thing you've learned, obviously, since then in terms of mining and all the way to now? I guess you know, I think mostly when you hear people like who are invested in crypto, none of them are really invested in the mining days, and so I just find that so interesting. That, you know, I wish I was kind of <clears throat> known that it was so lucrative, and just kind of yeah, it would just be interesting to kind of know your your thoughts and kind of. How you've seen the space, I guess, change beyond what you already mentioned. Yeah, uh, great question. Because I think um, what you at the point you're doing something, you have to keep that long-term vision clear for yourself, right? If you're here today and you think you want to make money tomorrow, I think it's better for you to have a normal job. If you're here and you think this is a good investment because this will change the world because of the decentralization, I think you're in the right place because I think the people that <clears throat> the early adopters, if I can remember correctly, we all were there because of decentralization. We believe in decentralization and we think blockchain can be the start of that and the technology that blockchain brings forward. And that's the power that we're seeing, because if you look at someone like uh, Vitalik, who, who guessed what Ethereum would do in so many years, and he guessed a lot of things right, but what he didn't see was the NFT hype. So it's, it's, it's not about what we want to happen, it's about the technology that will allow uh, frictionless uh, uh, improvements of, of, of things that we are used to, right? Um, so if I could change something or improve something or uh, give you guys a word of advice, it's keep the long-term perspective clear, right? If you're in crypto and you don't have a long-term offline cold storage wallet of Bitcoins, and I'm not talking about any other cryptocurrency, just Bitcoins, then you're doing something wrong in my personal opinion, because that's where the money will flow into. That's where the value is. 
uh, that's what 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 maybe in some years countries will even invest in or buy buy they're already doing it small countries but like maybe all the countries will get interested in holding at least some bitcoins right it only makes sense to me in in 10 years from now if they have their own uh, blockchain based uh, digital currencies right it only makes sense for them to also have some bitcoin which is like the og cryptocurrency uh, you do have to give some kudos to the to the uh, to the asset that started this whole uh, technology um, so if it's one lesson that i can give you guys it's like keep the long term perspective perspective clear and invest also for the long term besides everything you're doing for the short term gains the the 10000% yields and all that um, yeah So um, I think from here we can uh, continue to the next part, right? Because this is a technical analysis course. This is not a who is SEC and uh, why do we want to know anything about him. Um, so let's get into um, what I can tell you from my trading experience. I personally uh, use Bybit for 90% of my trading. Um, also because I created a trading software on Bybit. Um, so after I uh, quit mining, I uh, partnered with one of the biggest trading uh, software uh, um, providers in cryptocurrency um, and I created an algorithm for them and uh, I started my interest started um, uh, there basically. Um, can, you, can you tell us a little bit more about that? I, I mean, I know more, but I think it'd be interesting if just other people knew like, I mean, like what happened with the software, or maybe that kind of information. Yeah, yeah sure. Um, so I, I basically on this uh, nerdy Bitcoin Wednesday convention, I met uh, a guy who was asking for investment for his project. And uh, he turned out later on um, uh, to have built uh, the, the biggest cryptocurrency trading software or the most popular one back in the days. Now there is some little bit more popular ones, but he's still one of the big ones. And um, when I stopped mining, I reached out to him. I said I was interested in trading and I had a market making algorithm that I wanted to create, um, which uh, we'll dive into in these uh, courses and explain you guys what the benefits are of uh, using such a strategy. Um, so I started developing a strategy with them, with their software, but their software was based on a very slow coding language and uh, they didn't believe in AI and um, uh, machine learning, which, uh, which I'm uh, implementing my software and it's like my main focus. Um, and therefore I decided to like afterwards uh, create my own software uh, Till today, my algorithm with them is very popular. So they have a lot of users from the, from that algorithm, which is like a simpl simplified version of what I've created myself. And uh, this software, um, like uh, we're discussing if this could be a second course in, uh, uh, in CryptoNairs, uh, where you guys get the software and you can use it, and but it requires a lot of efforts from you as well to understand how to set up a lot, uh, your own algorithms and uh, have a trading software trade for you. So um, yeah, that that that's a. Um, uh, that's like a more complex um, uh, uh, course that, that we'll get into later, uh, which definitely requires you to understand the basics of, of trading uh, derivatives and, uh, and stuff. And so, can, can you hear me? Yes. Yep. Okay. And so it's, it is bot trading though, right? I just want to be really clear so people all kind of understand to some level. Is that correct? Sorry, can, um, like what? I said it involves a bot trading, correct? Like a bot trading for you systemically, is that correct? Just, exactly. Just so everyone's really yeah, okay. so what I created is an um, uh, algorithmic trading software. It can uh, receive uh, alerts from your trading view. So it's uh, connected with trading view or you can have in-house uh, in software uh, uh, algorithms trade and it's high frequency so you can do like a thousands uh, thousands of trades uh, per day um, so that's what we're building and uh, uh, currently with we're at implementing the uh, ai machine learning and uh, uh, yeah um, simplifying our whole software uh, to make it more user friendly and to be able to share it with more people uh, because what we've built is um, uh, a software that basically communicates with a server and the server um, um, uh, uh, basically prints and remembers all the trade history from all the users and combines that into like a, a database where we can find patterns uh, of, uh, of strategies from, from the best performing users. So it will also be really a software that leverages from a community, uh, um, yeah, the community uh, power basically. <clears throat> Very cool. Yeah, I mean, I, I've seen a preview of it, and 
I think like to Zach's point, it's very complicated, but I think it's very interesting. Me myself, um, you know, once I kind of understand more down the line, I probably will take a small portion of money and then just kind of trade with it. On obviously on a burner wallet, etc., just to see how successful it is. And I think Zach's had um, he's had success with it, and I know he's going to show some of us um, some of that stuff. So, uh, but I don't want to spoil it, and we'll look forward to that here in the future. So. Yeah, exactly. So, um, yeah, it, it, this is a, this is also uh, a reason why I'm showing you guys currently testnet.bybit.com. So, because I know that many of you are new to trading, uh, and um, it, it's just a, like experience is a big portion of trading. You do have to get some experience uh, b before you can actually start getting profitable. Uh, another big part of it is someone showing you that it's possible and how he does it. Uh, I think uh, that's what everyone is missing before they actually start getting profitable and understanding trading. So that's why where, where I will be here for to share with you guys my experience and how I would set, uh, uh, how I would look at a chart and um, we can like, see together how those things play out and if they actually hold any weight uh, that's uh, you guys can be the judge of that and implement it in your own ways um, uh, and after that like if you are aware of how trading works then it uh, becomes interesting to start automating your trading uh, so that you can continue your life without staring at your uh, screen all day um, so uh, yeah that's um, that's next up uh, let's start at the basics this is an exchange that we have right in front of us, and it's Bybit. For me, it's the best exchange. Why? Because I trust them. They basically beat by a BitMEX when BitMEX was basically bullying the market, um, and um, uh, they they are sponsor of a big German food, a soccer club. So I know that they will be around for a while. Uh, they won't uh, exit uh, uh, or something, and. Um, uh, so I trust this exchange. It's, it's it's very reliable. It's fast, and they offer all types of trading and all like the communication with them is perfect. Like yeah, I'm a big fan of them. Uh, I will share my affiliate link afterwards for the people that are interested to signing up. Um, the first thing that I would like to ask you guys, if you're interested in like practicing, sign up to testnet testnet.bybit.com. Basically, it's a replication of Bybit, but on here you're doing like paper trading. So it's exactly like the actual Bybit website. And you can go into the live chat, ask them for free coins, and then you can start practicing your trading. I think it's very, very, very necessary for you to at least start off for like one or two months on this testnet. Right? Even if you come from the from Forex trading, you have some background there. Trading crypto is a different uh, animal, so um, yeah, trade it accordingly. Um, but uh, yeah, let's get into the exchange and what what does Bybit offer uh, uh, a trader that's so valuable, in my opinion. Um, first of all, let's start at the homepage. So you guys will see a, a homepage like this, and then you can sign up and join uh, or log in. And uh, if you sign up, guys, you don't need to do KYC. If you're from the US, you're probably restricted. I'm not going to tell you what to do, but I know from from hearing uh, other people from the US that they use something called a VPN. So <laughs> that being said, um, um, you don't need to do KYC uh, in order to trade on this platform, which is also something I'm, uh, I'm a, fa a big fan of. We want to keep things decentralized and doing KYC is probably a centralized thing because at some point they can ask for all the uh, uh, account information and stuff. Um, what you can do is you can go to markets and it will show you the list of the markets that they're offering. And then we can, we get the first uh, complex thing that we're seeing. Like we can choose from derivatives and spots, spot ex, uh, spot markets. Now I'm sure some of you are aware what the derivatives uh, what the derivative is, um, but for those that aren't, I will explain um, how I see them. And how I how I see the value of an exchange offering offering derivatives in the crypto market. Uh, it's also it also comes with a lot of danger. Um, uh, but yeah, we'll we'll just dive into how this all works. So around 2015, I think it was, I saw Bitmax uh, and I logged in and created an account and they offered like like 100x leverage and they offered you to short Bitcoin and all the all the cool stuff. So I I created an account. Uh, my main purpose on BitMEX at that point was to basically short sell some of my mining income uh, before I had it. 
Okay, so imagine price going up a lot and I think it won't go higher. I can already sell uh, 60 Ethereum that I know I will be mining in the coming month, but I don't have them at the moment to basically sell them, but I can log in the price of today. All right, so that's a purpose, uh, that's a good use case for using futures. What this exchange does is pretty, pretty cool because you're not actually trading with them or no one is like another person is on the other side of the of the exchange so what are we trading here on this exchange on a derivatives exchange you are not trading the actual asset you are betting on the price of the asset going up or down what does that mean that means that the price of this asset is is following the price of bitcoin okay so currently it's at thirty four thousand eight hundred and fifty nine dollars this exchange has to follow the current price of Bitcoin because otherwise everyone, if the price would be 10% lower, everyone would buy Bitcoin on this exchange and they would have to cash them out, right? So this price has to always follow the price of the spot exchanges, which is called the index price. The index price is uh, an average of a couple of spot exchanges. Spot exchanges are where you can actually buy Bitcoins. So Coinbase is an exchange where you can actually buy Bitcoins and trade Bitcoins, right? So they take Coinbase, Bitfinex is also an exchange where you can buy and sell actual Bitcoins for dollars. So they take three of the major exchanges and the price of Bitcoin on there and their own price will always follow this price of these spot exchanges closely right so imagine you just built a website and you offer people fake contracts of uh, that are uh, supposedly worth one bitcoin okay and uh, uh, let's imagine 10 people join your website and all of all 10 of them want to buy bitcoin who's on the other side of the of the trade right because then the, the, the website owner would be at the other side of the trade and that's not what they're looking for. So they created a matching engine. That means that every time you buy $10,000 worth of Bitcoin derivatives, someone else has to be on the other side selling $10,000 worth of Bitcoin deriv derivatives. Well, how do they force people to be on the counter side, right? Because you can imagine that there are some times only people on one side and no one what, what, uh, willing to sell Bitcoin. For example, at this low, you can imagine that there is no one really willing to sell at the moment and there is only buyers. Well, that's where we get the funding rate, all right? Funding rate is basically an incentive for the counterparty to step in. Funding rate gets paid out every eight hours. And guys, this is not only on Bybit, this is on every derivatives exchange. All of them have it maybe slightly different, but this is how it works. Every eight hours, the people that are long are going to get paid by the people that are short because it's a negative funding for, uh, in three hours. But if I hover my mouse over this number in 11 hours, so the next funding, the funding after that, it will be 0.01%. And it will be a positive number, meaning that the people that are short are going to get paid by the people that are long. So now, if you buy in the coming three hours or three and a half hours, uh, you will get paid in three hours and 28 minutes if you're long. If you're short, you have to pay. And can you explain to us what's the difference between long and short? <clears throat> uh, yes, long is basically making a bet that Bitcoin price will go up. And short is when you bet that the price will go down. So on this website, we can uh, we can long and short. And how you can kind of imagine what helps me a lot is like, imagine you have a friend next to you that owns 10 Bitcoins. And he tells you that whenever you want, you can hold his Bitcoins and you're reliable for the losses and profits you make because you have to return him exactly the same dollar amount. Does that make sense? So let's say Bitcoin is at 10,000 and you tell him like, hey, let me hold one of your Bitcoins. He tells you, yes, but you have to return to me $10,000. You're like, okay. So you hold his one Bitcoin, Bitcoin goes to 15,000 and he wants only 10,000 from you. So you give him back his 10,000, now you have 5,000 in profit. Right? Yep, I think that's a good long example. Can you give us an example of a short? 
using Ooh, obsidian. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> so a short is basically, yeah, you're that friend that, that no, that doesn't work that way. I think I think that won't work that, that same, the same way. Uh, short selling is basically, yeah, you, you're selling something you don't have, so you're reliable for any price increases, right? So if I decide to short Bitcoin at 35,000, that basically means that I sold one Bitcoin that I don't have, but I sold it. And if the price goes uh, goes down, yes, then then I can buy it back cheaper from the guy that I've sold it to. So the, the the other side of the trade is always willing to negotiate with you whenever you want, right? So I, I sold one Bitcoin that I don't have, but I have a Bitcoin on the exchange, uh, on the exchange, so you can kind of sell it, right? So if I deposit one Bitcoin on here, I can I can sell my Bitcoin, uh, um, yeah, to someone and buy it back for cheaper. Uh, so if it, if it doesn't drop, I have to buy it back more expensive, and then that will be my loss. Got it. So so basically, I think uh, another way to think of it is kind of using that same analogy you were saying with a friend. So you borrow the Bitcoin from your friend. You, you borrow that. Let's say it was worth 10K, right? So you're borrowing that from your friend and you're going to sell it immediately because you think Bitcoin is going to go down. Right. So you would sell yeah, it, kind yeah. of take the 10K. And then when Bitcoin ah, yeah, down, that's a good one. 5K, right, then you would buy it back in and return that one Bitcoin to your friend. Exactly. Yeah. So it would be the same example, but instead the the the, the friend uh, wants his Bitcoin back instead of uh, him wanting okay. his dollar value back. So yep. then you just start selling the Bitcoin that you um, uh, got from him, and you hope that the price drops because otherwise you'll have to add your own money to it to get his bet Bitcoin back for him. So uh, yeah, that's kind of the thing. So. Uh, the, the, the main point, the main takeaway is you're always responsible for losses that you're making. So don't go out here thinking, hey, I can do 100x leverage without risk. No, there is always the same amount of risk. You just have that friend next to you that is willing to even give you more than you have on the exchange. So let's say you have one Bitcoin and you're very confident in something and you want to trade for three Bitcoins. He's willing to give you that exposure, that extra exposure without you going into your cold wallet and taking out extra Bitcoins. Right. So I always like to see the benefits like this. You always have a lot of, uh, um, 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 yeah, um, how do you call it? Exposure to your um, uh, available to you. So you can always expose yourself to the market in one or either directions. Awesome. Okay. And then I'm going to, I'm going to say pause there. Cause I think like, even me, when I first heard of shorting, it was hard to understand. So I'm going to pause there and then ask anyone to, is, is there any questions, right? Cause I think this is important to understand the difference between shorting and going long um, before we pursue any any further. So please go ahead and unmute and ask your questions if you have. If no one has questions, then we'll let that continue. Good. All right, so sh yeah, shorting seems, uh, seems clear to many of you. That's great. Um, all right, so we we uh, we were looking at the funding rate. So basically, this exchange uh, uh, it connects buyers with sellers. But at some points, we already concluded that there might be more buyers than sellers. How do they force those sellers to step into the market? Well, that's the funding uh, rate thing that they do. And uh, we'll dive more into the funding rate right now because this is very important because you're paying this uh, three times a day. All right, so um, let's do some simple calculations and I know that's not the funnest thing to do uh, but in trading we do have to do some calculations at times so um, before we do that actually we go into two different order types so guys you guys can see this red and green um, order book that's moving as if it's like a life right so you see a, a number being added and removed from uh, both sides the price is like slowly moving up and down this is what we call the order book. And this order book is basically for people that want to raise their hand to buy or sell uh, uh, Bitcoin. Um, so you can stand in line to, to basically say that if price reaches uh, 32,000, so let's, let's set up an example. So let's say my order price is 32,000 and my quantity that I want to buy is $10,000 worth of Bitcoin. And I have a limit order and I say, buy now and here is my limit order oh i did hundred thousand so there you go guys that's the first mistake you don't want to make too many times let's remove one of the zeros okay so i now i have an order for ten thousand dollars 
at 32,000. We can see the order right in, in the chart. And, and that means that uh, I'm also one of these guys that has, has a certain bit up uh, and um, this is called a limit order. A limit order is basically you stand in line and you don't transact directly. So what is a market order? A market order is if you want to buy, but you want to buy directly from the first person that's selling. So the first person selling is the first red guy in line, which is the 35,099 line and now 35,140. So if you want to buy directly, it's called the market order. And a market order interacts directly with the first seller and he will buy off him. All right, so we can do that. And we can see that we directly bought and we're directly in a position at 35,129. That's our entry price. What we can also see is that we have a daily realized PL already. So we already lost seven and a half dollars just for entering our position. Now let's do a limit order for the same amount and see if we also lose seven and a half dollars just for entering. Because what you guys will see is that limit orders. And this is fascinating compared to the normal markets, limit orders actually pay us money. So instead of having to pay to enter your trade, you are getting money from the exchange, all right? So I've not seen this in any um, trading that I did on foreign markets or whatever, other markets, I've only seen this in the derivatives, the derivatives markets in crypto. And I think it's pretty cool uh, because you're, get, you're getting incentivized to trade and you're not losing right away to the exchange when you enter your position. So let's see if this order can get filled and uh, we can go to our order history. Uh, but these are the numbers uh, behind it. So if you do a market order, you're paying 0.075%. If you do a limit order, you are getting paid 0.025%. That means that if you buy one whole Bitcoin at 38,000, 38,500, you're paying 28,000, uh, 20, almost $29, sorry, um, uh, as like a fee just to buy Bitcoin, right? Your guy, you guys should be uh, very familiar with paying commissions to, to make a trade. But if you're doing a limit order and the limit order was the order that waits and you you just wait in line for your turn, you are getting $9.60 uh, for free uh, just to enter the trade, right? Isn't that cool, guys? Um, so that's besides, besides the funding, right? So, um, we have something on these exchanges that's called leverage. And you guys might have heard this, uh, how dangerous this can be, and it is, um, for many, many reasons. And two of those are definitely the fees and the funding. So let's go and imagine that someone is very uh, new to trading and he heard that he can do 100x leverage uh, with his $10,000. So someone has $10,000 and he wants to do a 100, uh, 100x leverage trade. Could you just zoom in a little bit, Zach, on the yeah. Excel sheet? Yeah, I will do that. Uh, there we go. Okay, so this is the price uh, that you pay if you do a market order. This is the uh, uh, fee that you get when you do a limit order. Uh, this is the funding rate. 90% of the time, let, let's say 99% of the time, the funding rate is 0 0.01, a positive number, meaning that 99% of the time you have to pay to be long on Bitcoin. And that only makes sense because everyone that's in the crypto market and wants to leverage Bitcoin, they're a bull. I can tell you that much. They're bull, bullish on Bitcoin. They want Bitcoin to go to the moon. So let's punish them for being a moon boy, right? Every eight hours, they are paying 0.01% and 90% of the, those traders are not even aware of this funding rate and what it means. Because if we're going to calculate out that if this guy had, uh, let's let's lump, not, let, yeah, let's start with an extreme example. So he had $10,000 and he does a 100X long position at 38,500 and, um, um, the funding is three times a day. So it's three times 0.01% that you have to pay. So that's 0.03%. Then if you do that for uh, seven days, so one week straight, that's 0.21%. But let's not forget he has a 100x leverage. So you have to multiply this amount by 100, 
right? So after one week, just from the funding rate, he lost 21% of his money without Bitcoin moving in price. So let's say the price stayed exactly the same. This person would have already lost 21% of his total collateral. So of this $10,000, he would have already uh, lost 2.1K just because of the funding. And trust me, many people are not even aware that this funding exists. So they, they just go out and make the trade and they see that their money is becoming less and less and they're not aware of why this is. And another thing is that he also took, for example, a market order. So he also paid the 0.075, but that's also times 100. So he also lost 7.5% here. So 7.5 plus 21, he's already at a 28.5% loss, let alone that he's going to exit that market. That's another 7.5. Right? So this way you can lose your money really, really quickly. Even if you exit it at the, at the uh, same price, uh, you would have lost like 30% of your money just by opening and closing your trade, having it open for a week. And, and the price didn't even move against you. So the price has to move a lot in your direction to make up for this in that week. So if price just, just doesn't move, then you're just uh, slowly losing and draining your money. All right, so the extreme example is, of course, if you do a whole year, um, you get 10.9%, so let's say 11% without leverage. So if you do leverage with that, it's just insane. It's just insane. Because what you can imagine is if you open a short position, right, if Bitcoin is at the high and you're not too emotional about it, you're not like one of the guys saying, like, we have to go to 100K because we're already at 60, so this has to happen and you short it at 60K, you're very likely to be sitting on that position for a year and basically getting in these funding rates every eight hours. So that on, that on its own is 11% without you using leverage. So on 10% uh, on 10X leverage, so if you short a 10X, you'd already be up, uh, uh, you'd already double your money in a year without the price even moving down. So that's pretty crazy statistics uh, if you ask me. Any questions about this? Because I, I think this is um, not as easy as, uh, it's very important. Let's let's keep it on there. I have a question. So so to make it very simple, basically what you're saying is that if you are, I already used Bybit and I was placed a limit order in the books, basically let's just get a very, let's just say, let's just, I guess let's say a low price, right? <clears throat> Let's just say low, so that way it stays in there a while. Basically, every day I would be making money by having that trade and that limit order open, basically. Yes, exactly. So instead of, for example, selling your uh, Bitcoin spot, you could deposit your Bitcoins on Bybit, take a short position, 1x leverage. So that means that if you have one Bitcoin at, let's say we're trading at $64,000 and you have one Bitcoin that's worth 64,000, of course, at that point, then you short 64,000 worth of Bitcoin. That means that you're basically shorted the value of your own Bitcoin. And that means that you actually just sold your Bitcoin, but you're also gonna get these fundings. All right, so instead of selling it to the to the normal market and paying some fees to sell it, uh, you can just short it with a limit order. You get 0.025% from that, and then you sit on it and just get in these funding rates because everyone will start buying the dip for the coming year or maybe one and a half year. They, everyone will just be like uh, anxiously waiting for the price to pump. In, in, in all that time, we'll, we'll see a lot of longs paying funding uh, without them being aware, while the the, the, uh, the the shorters are basically sitting on their position and just getting those fundings for free. So yeah, the, the same way if you hold uh, your long position for one year, you basically lost your money without you losing even on the price. So it's not the idea to buy into derivatives exchange for the long term um, just because of the funding. And if you guys want to know, um, there has been a very, very extreme uh, example. Uh, and uh, I was funny, funny, yeah, funny enough, I was the only person to find it out um, as far as I was aware. But uh, we had a funding of like 2.5%. So imagine the funding going up to 2.5% on one of the coins. And it was OMG coin. Maybe some of you guys know this cryptocurrency. Um, and this, this was like some months ago. Uh, 
two or three months ago, and you could basically it it was uh, I think it was minus. 2.7 or something uh, for for some days. That means that uh, with a 10x long position, you're basically getting uh, uh, three three times your money every time uh, the funding pays out. So, yeah, there can be very extreme examples. And if you go uh, guys are interested to keep track of this um, and look into this yourself, I have a website for that. It's called. Oh, let me use this one. All right, if you go to Bybit, oh, they changed, uh, they, I think they got bought up by uh, Coinglass. Okay, interesting. Anyway, so Coinglass.com, I guess it is now. Uh, you can uh, you can click on funding rate, and then you can see all the funding rates per exchange. All right, so you can see that the funding rate is pretty much uh, neg slightly negative or positive, depending on which exchange you use. And then we can see uh, for every coin what the funding rates are. We can see that, that some are highly in the uh, minus um, and um, some are in the positive. So you can benefit of, uh, from uh, trading altcoins that have a certain uh, funding rate uh, paying out. So always be aware that the funding is not your main indicator to start a trade, right? It's, that's, it's not that easy, um, um, but it's something to take into account when you're trading. So I would like to have some questions, I think, because I, I, I just went over it at in one go. So if there is any questions, then I would like to answer them. Uh, but if everything's clear, yeah, that's great. Anyone have any questions? There is no bad question or, or dumb question, so please feel free to speak up. Go ahead, Cass. Yeah, I put a question. Yep. Can you hear me? Yeah, sure. Okay. Um, what about um, stop losses? Um, whereabouts do you put them in, long in and short in? Um, and then is there a take profit strategy that you have as well? Uh, yeah, good question. I will definitely get into uh, those questions in uh, one of the later courses. So this is basically just an introduction to get uh, to uh, um, to show you guys uh, the exchange that I use and explain you guys how market orders, limit orders, uh, funding rate um, uh, works. Uh, but um, yeah, if it comes to stop losses, um, my idea about it is that your stop loss is just as important, if not more important, than your entry is. And many people underestimate that. Many people think that a stop loss is like uh, some additional thing that you can do, uh, but if you use a stop loss, it's just as important as your uh, entry point because it's your invalidation point. And if you don't have an invalidation point, you don't even have a trade setup. Um, so yeah. And uh, for the take profit, I like to uh, definitely take a, um, um, a partial take profit um, to cover for my stop loss. If that makes sense. So if we, if the price goes my uh, goes into my direction and I'm able to cover my stop loss and uh, and have a position open and maybe uh, enough to co um, cover two more uh, take profits, uh, then I'll definitely go for that. So I'm um, I do like taking early profits uh, part partially because I I do also see that as one of my um, uh, weaknesses that I don't stick to the trade long enough in some oca occasions, which in crypto is very very important. You don't close your entire trade you just let some of it run um, especially on altcoins you can uh, you can double your money and be happy with it but the uh, next thing you see that you know it it, it, um, it goes uh, 10x from your entry point uh, so it's uh, that's one from experience for altcoin trading for example for me it's like uh, taking my initial investment out and then letting the rest just in um, that's my strategy for altcoins and uh, yeah Any other questions? Yeah, I've got a question. Perfect. Uh, what, what is the typical timeline on one of these uh, shorter longs? I mean, in crypto, everything goes so quickly. Is this something that's really more for intraday or is, you know, what is a long, you know, a long period of time for this type of strategy? 
Yeah, great question. I think that um, that's also in uh, one of the courses where we will look into the different time frames that you have to take into account when looking at a chart. And you're very correct that if you want to scalp or uh, day trade uh, cryptocurrencies, you have to really, really put a lot of time in. Uh, it's it's very volatile. Things change rapidly. Uh, it's um, most of this market is being um, being moved by uh, software. Uh, so it's very hard for us uh, as humans <laughs> basically to compete in this 24 seven uh, market that never closes and uh, and uh, things also like to happen uh, when no one is watching in cryptocurrency land so um uh, the thing with that is you have you have the ability to pick your own trades. So if you don't force yourself into a bad trade, you can wait for the right setups and you can basically sit on your trades for a very, very long time. Or you can take a hedge trade. Uh, in both scenarios, you're taking a lot more long term uh, approach to this. Uh, you could also, for example, if you automate trades, also pick your own time frame. So that depends a lot on which time frame you're looking at. So, for example, if if we have a chart. Um, Ah, okay, that wasn't what I wanted to do. Sorry, guys. I closed my uh, browser. There we go. All right, so currently I'm looking at the, uh, a time frame of two days. Right, so I can zoom out in Bitcoin and I can see the, I can see the entire history uh, of price. And um, so this is the entire price history of Bitcoin over many, many years. Uh, but if I do like a, oh, I can't do that here, of course. Um, if I take like a, a, a one hour, uh, uh, a few on this, then you can see I can't see the entire history. It's it's just uh, uh, up to the 23rd of August. Uh, uh, August. So um, um, this doesn't show me what happened before that. So if I'm if I'm looking at this chart and this is what I take my idea from, then this is not a, that this is not an idea of the longer time frame uh, trade. This is an idea to scalp from or have an intraday uh, setup, and that might lead up to a very profitable long term setup. But that's not the idea from the start. At a start, this would only be a scalp in, uh, and day trade. So, um, but if I switch this back to like, for example, a 12 hour, well, in here we can definitely have some bigger uh, bigger setups take uh, take place. Right, so it, it really depends on the time frame you're looking at and the time frame that you're looking at and taking your trade from uh, that depends on what you can expect uh, as like um, how much time will will this trade cost. So then this really comes down to being able to read the chart and kind of predict where things are going to go. Yeah, exactly. So you first of all need to understand the chart and then you pick your own time frame that you are uh, looking for a setup. Um, okay. and, and and for me it, it always starts with um, and I think that's uh, that's nor very normal practice that you always start from the higher time frames and then go uh, uh, go to, to to the lower time frames even if you have a lower time frame trading setup you always want confirmation that the higher time frame is also going into your direction uh, you can kind of see this as like um, I like to I, I like to describe it with like waves uh, of an ocean you have the wave and then you have the tie and you have a drip in the water and you have like yeah yeah, you have to know that all those uh, all those waves are going into the same direction as you're trading on on those lower as you're trying to surf on those lower uh, waves, basically on those smaller waves. Really weird example, but <laughs> trying to make it more clear instead of uh, making it less clear. <laughs> yeah. Any other questions, guys? Or was that clear enough? Uh, first of all. No, that's good. All right. Thanks. Great. So do we have other questions or um, I don't know how long we've been going for at the moment. Um, we're, we're almost at an hour. Yeah. So then I guess the, and I know a lot of people had some questions and it sounds like we're going to be looking into those and to the next questions or sorry, into the next courses. So if no one has questions and, and I'm not sure if you're done here for this lesson, Zach, but 
maybe you can give us an um like a quick uh, I guess what's to come in the next course so that way you know people can kind of know what's what's to come and and what other things we'll be looking at. Yep, definitely. Yeah, we'll uh, we'll be diving into like how to do an analysis and also how to basically plan plan your trades Be because in my opinion you uh, you can only trade when you have a clear plan and the 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 plan has to come to you before you take the setup. Right. So what is a trade setup? What is a plan? Well, I have shared some of my charts uh, since I've joined uh, this community and uh, everything is being tracked on Discord. So we can just refer back to my charts and see where did I go right? Where did I go wrong? Where did I base my ideas off? Uh, so um, the main takeaway will be that uh, all of you guys are uh, will be able to um, recognize market structure. Uh, so basically tell like at what part of the market structure are we because uh, I think um, um, you can agree to this uh, um, uh, uh, disappointed. Sorry for calling you that, but uh, I will just uh, use your Discord name. Um, so uh, you can agree to that, that I was kind of saying that we were in the fa fifth wave of many of the altcoins that people were love loving to invest in at that <laughs> point. And it wasn't fun for me to tell everyone like, sorry, guys, <laughs> I'm seeing something different. And I was trying to be as as uh, <laughs> careful as possible. Uh, but that was the, what the chart was telling me just because of the waves and the market structure. And um, uh, it's funny how human psychology always gets us to do kind of the same thing, right? Um, so th that's what we will be, we'll be diving into. Like, uh, uh, you should be able to take any chart of anything you like, as long as it's available in TradingView. So one of the first uh, next courses will go into will go into TradingView. How do you use it? Which tools does it have available for us? What do, what do I like to look at? So we'll be looking um, into the indicators that over the years I found very, very helpful into um, uh, finding where the price uh, will go for Bitcoin and finding the right trend and finding areas that are uh, that will um, offer us a lot more support than other areas for example um, I think I shared this chart with you guys as well but these lines are very very old but they come from a bigger time frame um, support and resistance with volume profiles um, so when I see the price going below my purple line I kind of don't don't want to trade anywhere in the middle because I know the only interesting people for uh, interesting price area for multiple people is it's lower down. So why would I take any entry here? Right. And, and these levels are based on volume profiles. And I will teach you guys how you can do this for any any coin so that you know, like how much volume was traded, because sometimes sometimes price goes somewhere, but it doesn't actually mean anything because that area, it, there was no, nothing being transacted. <laughs> Everyone was, was asleep, for example, when that happened. So so, yeah, we, we will start to recognize those things. And then in the later courses, we can go into, yeah automating all everything that we learn um, into the trading software. So yeah, it will just be the basics, learning how to do your own technical analysis using indicators. So one of the courses will be only focused on indicators. We will go into uh, um, a lot of different indicators and I will give you the indicators that I think are valuable. Um, um, so yeah. Awesome. Yeah, so I mean, I, I know me, especially like I'm looking forward, especially to the indicators class, because um, I know very basic TA, but, you know, I think for me, I always struggle just to place just some of the, you know, basic indicators down, for example, like the FIB, how do I know I'm putting it down in the right place and stuff like that. So definitely looking forward to those, um, those classes that are coming up. Yeah, great. I think I think uh, yeah, it took me a lot of time uh, figuring out which indicators work, which indicators don't. And I think you guys are going to have a lot of value in these indicators because it will just have uh, help you guys have a more neutral and less more less of a FOMO or, or, or bullish view on the market and just more of a neutral view of like where is a good value area for me to buy. Um, and uh, yeah, I think uh, that combined with uh, with all the early uh, early projects that Crypto Nerves is finding for us that that's going to be amazing because we can start we can start accumulating projects and together none of us uh, buys the top and we all smartly invest in the in the project and i think that that's going to be uh, yeah key to to our success uh, instead of buying the tops on some projects and uh, holding it down for like three years because i i know that uh, people do this like uh, they buy an altcoin and for the next three, four, five years, uh, that that stuff never gets high, uh, at a higher price than than it was. And uh, if you look at Coin Market Cap, you're gonna find 
many, many examples of exactly this happening. Coins basically going to dust, literally going to zero. So uh, yeah, therefore it's uh, sometimes very valuable to trade to know what a trade is, where your invalidation points are, because at some points. Other traders are, that are in the know-how, they are not interested to long that asset anymore, and you're still waiting for the pump to come. So I think it's going to be valuable to know, and uh, I hope to see a lot of you guys there. Um, I th I, thanks to everyone uh, that, that was here. And if there is any questions, um, now is your time. Yeah, Zach, I think too, so, so for future classes, I think because we might have people in the next class, I think... I think maybe what we do is do it on Zoom, have a Zoom link. That way you can share your screen and everybody can see you. And then we can mute everybody too. So you could do it in that fashion. Maybe I think we'll look to do that next. Maybe. Uh, sounds sounds good. Um, uh, yeah, if we can practice it in the, in the coming period, let's uh, let's give it like a test run, see how that goes. And uh, uh, I, I liked it uh, so far as it is. Uh, I, I was happy that uh, we got some um, uh, we got uh, disappointed here today to mute some people because I know in the last class with uh, a small red, or that wasn't the case. So it's uh, it all went well. Uh, but uh, yeah, let's try uh, Zoom next time. Great, great work, man. We appreciate you uh, bringing these classes to us and helping us learn and educating us. Uh, so thank you so much, sir. Appreciate you. Thanks for the opportunity. Thanks. Um, if anyone has suggestions for the next class, please um, share them with us and uh, I'll be happy to read it. Thanks for, uh, for being here. And thanks everyone. And again, I, I think this was a intro class, so I, you know, I think in the future we'll get more into the nitty gritty, but again, yeah, thanks for coming. Enjoy your weekend and hopefully we'll see you next Saturday.